Do all animals have red blood? The color of blood is related to the compounds that transport oxygen. Hemoglobin, containing iron, is red and is found in all vertebrates and a few invertebrates. Anlids, segmented worms, have either a green pigment, chlorocruorin, or a red pigment, hemerythrin. Some crustaceans, arthropods having divided bodies and generally having gills. Have a blue pigment, hemocyanin, in their blood. What is wormwood? Artemisia absinthium, known as wormwood, is a hardy, fragrant perennial that grows to heights of 2 to 4 feet, 6 to 1.2 m. Wormwood is native to Europe but has been widely naturalized in North America. Absinthe, a liquor, is distilled and flavored using this plant. Absinthe was banned in the United States in the early 1900s. Because it is considered habit-forming and hazardous to one's health. How can genes become rearranged? Any rearrangement within a gene is a mutation. And such rearrangement is usually due to a random genetic accident. The mutation can be harmless and simply add to the variation within an organism's genome. Or it can be harmful with dire consequences. How has anise been used throughout history? The Romans brought the licorice flavored herb anise, Pimpinella anisum. From Egypt to Europe, where they used it as payment for their taxes. It became a popular flavoring for cakes, cookies, bread, and candy. How can genes be used to detect single gene disorders? Genetic testing can be used to determine those at risk for a particular inherited condition. There are more than 200 single gene disorders that can be diagnosed in prenatal individuals using recombinant DNA techniques. Also, since some genetic disorders appear later in life, children and adults can be tested for genetic disorders before becoming symptomatic. If the locus of the disease-causing gene is known, gene markers can be used to determine which family members are at risk. An example of an adult-onset genetic disorder is polycystic kidney disease, which occurs between the ages of 35 and 50. These cysts produced by the disease will eventually destroy the kidneys. Prior knowledge of the condition allows both patient and doctor to closely monitor any changes in the kidneys.
How do aseptic procedures prevent contamination? The goal of aseptic procedures is to keep the organisms used in an experiment separate from the millions of other organisms in the environment. These procedures focus on the way to transfer organisms from test tube to test tube, from test tube to flask or petri dish, and from petri dish to petri dish or flask. What is nuclear magnetic resonance? Nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, is a process in which the nuclei of certain atoms absorb energy from an external magnetic field. Scientists use NMR spectroscopy to identify unknown compounds, check for impurities, and study the shapes of molecules. They use the knowledge that different atoms will absorb electromagnetic energy at slightly different frequencies. How does smoking affect the DNA of lung cells? Smoking appears to alter gene expression in lung cells. The proteins produced by the bronchial cells of smokers show increased synthesis of genes, which can eventually be carcinogenic. It appears that the expression of these important genes that control cancer development, cancer suppression, or airway inflammation varies according to the number of years spent smoking. The good news is that two years after a person stops smoking, his slash her gene expression levels begin to resemble those of people who have never smoked. How does asexual reproduction differ from sexual reproduction? Asexual reproduction produces offspring with the exact genetic material of the parent. Only one individual is needed to produce offspring via asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction produces offspring by the fusion of two gametes, haploid cells, to form one zygote, diploid cell. The male gamete is the sperm, and the female gamete is the egg. Who coined the phrase survival of the fittest? Although frequently associated with Darwinism, this phrase was coined by Herbert Spencer. 1820-1903, an English sociologist. It is the process by which organisms that are less well adapted to their environment tend to perish and better adapted organisms tend to survive. What is a cell? A cell is a membrane-bound unit that contains hereditary material, DNA, and cytoplasm, 
it is the basic structural and functional unit of life. What is the origin of the name Jimson Weed? Jimson weed, Deterostromonium, is a corruption of the name Jamestown weed. The colonists of Jamestown, Virginia, were familiar with this weed. It is also known as thorn apple, mad apple, stink word, angel's trumpet. Devil's trumpet, stink weed, 188 to try, and white man's weed. Even when consumed in moderate amounts, every part of this plant is poisonous and potentially deadly. Even so, some of the alkaloids found in this plant are used by doctors as a pre-anesthetic. Why are ribosomes an important organelle? Ribosomes, one of the most complex aspects of the molecular machine, are the site of protein synthesis in a cell. They consist of a large and small subunit composed of ribosomal RNA and protein. However, compared with membrane bound organelles, ribosomes are tiny structures. What are heterosporous plants? Heterosporous plants produce two types of spores microspores and megaspores which develop into the male gametophyte and female gametophyte, respectively. In 1580 the physician Prospero Alpini 1553 to 1616 identified that plants exist in male and female forms Skinner related to operant conditioning B F. Skinner, 1904-1990, was an American psychologist who extensively studied trial and error learning in animals, later known as operant conditioning. A standard setup for his research involved the following, an animal is placed in a cage. Known as a Skinner box, that has a bar or pedal that yields a food reward when pressed. Once the animal has practiced the behavior, it will continue to press the bar repeatedly. Having learned to associate this activity with food. By releasing food only when the animal completes some task. The observer can train the subject to perform complex behaviors on demand. These operant conditioning techniques have been used to teach. Behaviors such as training pigeons to play table tennis with their beaks. Do animals ever take advantage of each other? Any interaction where one actor benefits while the other is hurt in. Some way could be described as one animal taking advantage of another. Common examples of this type of behavior include predation and parasitism.
How do elements differ from one another? Distinguishing one element from another requires a look at the subatomic particles of an atom the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Each element has a specific number of protons. This number is used to ascribe an atomic number to an element. All atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons. For example, an atom of helium has an atomic number of 2 because it has 2 protons. And therefore 2 electrons. An atom with an equal number of protons and electrons, such as helium, has a net electrical charge of 0. How do cells drink? Cells drink by a process called pinocytosis, which is a form of endocytosis. During pinocytosis the cell membrane folds inward, forming a small pocket. Vesicle around fluid that is directly outside the cell membrane. Fluid consumed by cells may contain small molecules, such as lipids. Endothelial cells, which line capillaries, are constantly undergoing the process of pinocytosis. Drinking from the blood within the capillaries. How does the Biorid test indicate the presence of protein? The bond between the amino group and the carboxyl acid. Group on adjacent amino acids in a protein is a peptide bond. When the Biorid reagent, 1% solution of copper sulfate is added to a solution containing peptide bonds, the solution turns a violet color. The violet color is a positive test for the presence of protein. The more 516 intense the color, the greater the number of peptide bonds that react. How are enzymes named? Individual enzymes are named by adding the suffix ASE to the name of the substrate with which the enzyme reacts. An example of this method is the enzyme amylase, which controls the breakdown of amylose, starch. There are categories of enzymes that control certain reactions. Hydrolysis control hydrolytic reactions, protein as control protein breakdown. Synthetesis control synthesis reactions. There are exceptions, trypsin and pepsin, both digestive enzymes that break down protein. Retain the names used before the modern form of nomenclature was adopted. In other words, how many different species are there within a habitat? Finally, Measuring ecosystem diversity is an attempt to keep track of the loss of different types of habitats.
This in turn gives scientists a sense of what types of species are going extinct at any given time. Which important pharmacological compound was once obtained from the gymnosperm ephedra? In the past, the drug ephedrine, used in the treatment of respiratory problems, was extracted from species of the genus ephedra, common name, mahuang, found in China. This process has now been largely replaced with the preparation of synthetic ephedrines. Ephedra was a dietary supplement used to aid weight loss, enhance sports performance, and increase energy. In late 2003 the U.S. Food and Drug Administration banned the use of ephedra as a dietary supplement because it can pose an unreasonable health risk. What is microscopic autoradiography? Microscopic autoradiography is a technique used to localize radioactive molecules within cells. It utilizes photographic emulsion to determine where a specific radioactive compound is located within a cell at the time the cell is fixed and sectioned for microscopy. How do skin cells synthesize vitamin D? Vitamin D is crucial to normal bone growth and development. When UV light shines on a lipid present in skin cells, the compound is transformed into vitamin D. People native to equatorial and low latitude regions of the earth have dark skin. Pigmentation as a protection against strong, nearly constant exposure to UV radiation. Most people native to countries that exist at higher latitudes where UV radiation is weaker and less constant have lighter skin, allowing them to maximize their vitamin D synthesis. During the shorter days of winter, the vitamin D synthesis that occurs in people that live in higher latitudes is limited to small areas of skin exposed to sunlight. Increased melanin pigmentation, present in people native to lower latitudes, reduces the production of vitamin D. Susceptibility to vitamin D deficiency is increased in these populations by the traditional clothing of many cultural groups native to low latitudes, which attempts to cover the body completely to protect the skin from overexposure to UV radiation. Most clothing effectively absorbs irradiation produced by ultraviolet B rays. The dose of ultraviolet light required to stimulate skin synthesis of vitamin D is about six times higher in African Americans than in people of European descent. The presence of darker pigmentation and slash or veiling may significantly impair sun-derived vitamin D production. Even in sunny regions like Australia. What is a gene probe? A gene probe is a specific segment of single-strand DNA that is complementary to a desired gene. 
For example, if the gene of interest contains the sequence Otkaka, then the probe will contain the complementary sequence tact. When added to the appropriate solution, the probe will match and then bind to the gene of interest to facilitate locating the probe. Scientists usually label it with a radioisotope or a fluorescent dye so that it can be visualized and identified. What books did Darwin publish? Journal of Researches into the Geology and Natural History of the Various countries visited by HMS Beagle under the command of Capt. Fitzroy, R.N., from 1832 to 1836, 1839, Geological Observations on Coral Reefs, Volcanic Islands And on South America, being the geology of the Voyage of the Beagle, under the command of Capt. Fitzroy, during the years 1832 36, 1846, a monograph on the subclass Cirripedia. 1851 1854, a monograph on the fossil Lepodidae, or, pedunculated cirripedes of Great Britain. 1851, a monograph on the fossil balanity and verosity of Great Britain, 1854, on the origin of species by means of natural selection. Or, the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life, 1859, on the various contrivances by which British and foreign orchids are fertile leased by insects, and on the good effects of intercrossing. 1861, the movements and habits of climbing plants, 1865, the variation of animals and plants under domestication. 1868, the descent of man, and selection in relation to sex. 1871, the expression of the emotions in man and animals, 1872, insectivorous plants, 1876, the effects of cross and self. Fertilization in the vegetable kingdom, 1876, the different forms of flowers on plants of the same species. 1877, the power of movement in plants, 1880, the formation of vegetable mold, through the action of worms. With observations on their habits, 1881, the movements and habits of climbing plants, 1882. What are the essential nutrient elements required for plant growth? Essential nutrients are chemical elements that are necessary for plant growth. An element is essential for plant growth when, 1, it is required for a plant to complete its life cycle. To produce viable seeds, 2. It is part of a molecule or component of the plant that is itself essential to the plant, such as the magnesium in the chlorophyll molecule. And 3. The plant displays symptoms of deficiency in the absence of the element. Essential nutrients are also referred to as essential minerals and essential inorganic nutrients.
Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of the Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaur's extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued, as has the theory that mammals ate so. Many dinosaur eggs that dinosaur reproduction was irrevocably harmed. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped the dinosaurs out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. Orbit, and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. The catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980 the American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist son Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990 tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110 miles 177 kilometers wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments, has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles 9.3 kilometers wide, would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere, reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires, which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect on other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the coup de grace. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs.
What is normal body temperature? Normal body temperature is the acceptable temperature for an animal. The following chart identifies normal body temperature for a variety of ectotherms and endotherms. What is a biogeochemical cycle? The elements that organisms need most, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Cycle through the physical environment, the organism, and then back to the environment. Each element has a distinctive cycle that depends on the physical and chemical properties of the element. Examples of biogeochemical cycles include the carbon and nitrogen cycles both of which have a prominent gaseous phase. Examples of biogeochemical cycles with a prominent geologic phase include phosphorus and sulfur, where a large portion of the element may be stored in ocean sediments. Examples of cycles with a prominent atmospheric phase include carbon and nitrogen. How is nuclear waste stored and regulated? Nuclear wastes consist either of fission products formed from atom splitting of uranium, cesium, strontium, or krypton, or from transuranic elements formed when uranium atoms absorb free neutrons. Wastes from transuranic elements are less radioactive than fission products. However, these elements remain radioactive far longer than fission products. Transuranic wastes include irradiated fuel, spent fuel, in the form of 12 feet 4 meters long rods. High level radioactive waste in the form of liquid or sludge, and low level waste. Non-transuranic or legally high level, in the form of reactor hardware, piping, toxic resins, water from fuel pools, and other items that have become contaminated with radioactivity. Currently, most spent nuclear fuel in the United States is safely stored. In specially designed pools at individual reactor sites around the country. If pool capacity is reached, licensees may move toward use of above-ground dry storage casks. The three low-level radioactive waste disposal sites are Barnwell, South Carolina, Hanford, Washington, and EnviroCare, Utah. Each site accepts low-level radioactive waste from specific regions of the country but only EnviroCare uses above-ground storage. Most high-level nuclear waste has been stored in double-walled stainless steel tanks surrounded by 3 feet 1 meter of concrete. The current best storage method, developed by the French in 1978, is to incorporate the waste into a special molten glass mixture. Then enclose it in a steel container and bury it in a special pit. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982, as amended in 1987, specified that high level radioactive waste would be disposed of underground in a deep geologic repository. Yucca Mountain, Nevada was chosen as the single site to be developed for disposal of high-level radioactive waste. 
on July 23, 2002, President George W. Bush signed House Joint Resolution 87. Allowing the Department of Energy to establish a repository in Yucca Mountain to safely store nuclear waste. However, some scientists still expressed concerns about the estimates of how long it would take for rainwater and snow to infiltrate the mountain and corrode the containers. Do all plant cells contain chloroplasts? No, not all plant cells contain chloroplasts. The various types of plant cells arise from meristem, rapidly dividing and undifferentiated tissue. Meristem cells do not contain chloroplasts, but have smaller organelles called proplastids. Depending on their location in a plant and how much light they receive, proplastids develop into one of several alkynes of plastids with different functions. Chloroplasts are one example of a plastid that converts light energy to chemical energy. Subsequently used in synthesizing organic molecules the process of photosynthesis. What is Botox? Botox, the trade name for botulinum toxin type A is a protein produced by the Bacterium clostridium botulinum. Although it is the same toxin that causes food poisoning. Purified botulinum toxin that is sterile and has been converted to a form that can be injected and used in a medical setting. Botox was first approved by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, in December 1989 to treat two eye muscle disorders. Uncontrollable blinking, blepharospasm, and misaligned eyes, strabismus. In 2000 the toxin was approved to treat cervical dystonia. A neurological movement disorder that causes severe neck and shoulder contractions. In small doses it is able to block nerve cells from releasing a chemical called acetylcholine, which signals muscle contractions. By selectively interfering with a muscle's ability to contract, existing frown lines are smoothed out, improving the appearance of the surrounding skin. Who was the first individual to find the gene for breast cancer? Mary Claire King, 1946, determined that in 5 to 10 percent of those women with breast cancer, the cancer is the result of a mutation of a gene on chromosome 17, the BRCA1 breast cancer 1. The BRCA1 gene is a tumor suppressor gene and is also linked to ovarian cancer. Subsequently, other researchers were able to clone the gene and pinpoint its exact location on chromosome 17. What is Darwinian medicine? Darwinian medicine is the application of Darwinian principles. 
descent with modification via natural selection, to the disease process. The purpose of the study of medicine from a Darwinian point of view is not to determine who is fittest or healthiest. But instead to determine the evolutionary underpinnings of why. As such highly adapted organisms, we as a species are still prone to diseases like atherosclerosis. Hardening of the blood vessels, nearsightedness, or cancer. Who was Comte de Buffon? Georges Louis Leclerc, Comte de Buffon, 1707-1788, was an early proponent of natural history. Which is the study of plants and animals in their natural settings. He was also known for his work as a mathematician. Buffon was interested in the modes by which evolutionary change could occur. A prolific writer, his work Natural History comprised 35 volumes. He pondered the meaning of the term species and whether such groupings were immutable, unchanging, over time. In addition, he served as mentor to John Baptiste de Lamarck, 1744 to 1829. Do both sides of DNA contain genes? One strand of DNA contains the information that codes for genes. And it is called the antisense strand or non-coding strand. It is the strand that is transcribed into mRNA and is designated as the template strand. The other, complementary strand is called the coding strand. Because it contains codons, or sense strand. Its sequence is identical to the mRNA strand, except for the substitution of U, uracil, for T, thymine. Is there a relationship between the size of the root system and the size of the shoot system? Growing plants maintain a balance between the size of the root system. The surface area available for the absorption of water and minerals, and the shoot system, the photosynthesizing surface. The total water and mineral absorbing surface area in young. Seedlings usually far exceeds the photosynthesizing surface area. As the plant ages, the root to shoot ratio decreases. Additionally, if the root system is damaged, reducing the water and mineral absorbing surface area. Shoot growth is reduced by lack of water, minerals, and root-produced hormones. Similarly, reducing the size of the shoot system limits root growth by decreasing. The availability of carbohydrates and shoot-produced hormones to the roots. Do fish drink water? Marine bony fishes such as tuna, flounder, and halibut drink sea water almost constantly to replace water lost by osmosis and through their gills. 
it is estimated that they drink an amount equal to 1% of their body weight each hour. An amount comparable to a human drinking 1.5 pints or nearly 3 cups. 700 milliliters of water every hour around the clock. The gills eliminate most of the excess salts obtained by drinking large quantities of seawater. The fishes excrete small quantities of urine that is isotonic to their body fluids. By contrast, cartilaginous fishes, e. g. sharks and rays, do not need to drink water to maintain the balance of water. Osmotic balance, in their bodies. They reabsorb the waste product urea. Creating and maintaining a blood urea concentration that is 100 times higher than that of mammals. Their kidneys and gills thus do not have to remove large quantities of salts from their bodies. Freshwater fishes never drink water separate from ingesting food. These fishes are prone to gain water since their body fluids are hypotonic. Containing a lesser concentration of salts, to the surrounding water. They imbibe water through their gills to maintain the correct balance of salts in their bodies and excrete large quantities of diluted urine daily. It is estimated that freshwater fishes eliminate a quantity of urine equal to one third of their body weight each day. How can you tell male and female lobsters apart? The differences between male and female lobsters can only be seen when they are turned on their backs. In the male lobster the two swimmerets, forked appendages used for swimming, nearest the carapace. The solid shell, are hard, sharp, and bony, in the female the same swimmerets are soft and feathery. The female also has a receptacle that appears as a shield wedged between the third pair of walking legs. During mating the male deposits sperm into this receptacle. Where it remains for as long as several months until the female uses it to fertilize her eggs as they are laid. How do bacteria survive without nutrients? When a population of bacteria loses its food supply, many bacteria dehydrate. During this process bacteria produce a thick, tough spore coat. As spores, Bacteria are able to rest for long periods of time. When conditions become favorable, the spores become active again. The bacteria absorb water, break down their thick, tough spore coats, and begin to form new cell walls. What is the basic composition of a sponge? A sponge is supported by a skeleton made of hard crystals called spicules whose shape and composition are important features in taxonomy. Calcareous sponges have spicules of calcium carbonates, the material of marble and limestone. The silica spicules of the hexactinellid, or glass, sponges are formed into a delicate, glassy network. 
Demo sponges have siliceous spicules and a network of fibrous protein, spunger, that is similar to collagen. The demo sponges are the source of natural household sponges, which are made by soaking dead sponges. In shallow water until all the cellular material has decayed, leaving the spongin network behind. However, most sponges sold now for household use are plastic and have nothing to do with real sponges. What are some of the best known deuteromycetes? Deuteromycetes are mostly free-living and terrestrial, but some are pathogenic. The best-known pathogenic deuteromycetes include the causal agent, Aspergillus niger. Of a respiratory disease called aspergillosis, athlete's foot, epidermophyte and floccosum. Ringworm, microsporum canis, and candida yeast infection. Candida albicans. Some other famous deuteromycetes are species of the genus Penicillium, particularly P. Notatum, for the role it played in the discovery of penicillin, P. Chrysogenum, for the commercial production of penicillin, P. Grisofulvum, for the production of grisofulvin. An effective antibiotic against ringworm and athlete's foot, and P. Roquefort E and P. Camembertai, which are used to make Roquefort and Camembert cheeses, respectively. Why are mass extinctions a part of evolution? A mass extinction is named for a time period in which at least 60% of the living species present become extinct over a period of 1 million years. Mass extinctions are considered biological catastrophes. Because of the relative speed and range of their effects. The loss of so many species allows surviving populations to exploit their adaptations in new ways. They can adapt to new parts of the environment without facing competition from other species. Certain organelles. Example chloroplasts and mitochondria within eukaryotic cells share a number of similarities with bacteria. Because of this, scientists surmise that early versions of eukaryotic cells had symbiotic relationships with certain bacteria, the eukaryote provided protection and resources. While the prokaryote specialized in converting energy, either sunlight or chemical, into forms that could be used by the eukaryotic cell. Sugar or ATP, thus the term endosymbiote, meaning shared internal life. Similarities between chloroplasts, mitochondria and free-living bacteria include, genetic material. All have DNA in chromosomes protein synthesis, all are capable of making proteins energy transduction. All are capable of acquiring and using energy to perform reactions. What is meant by a codominant allele? Codominance is an example of non-Mendelian genetics. When alleles are codominant, 
All versions are expressed in the phenotype. An example of this can be found in chinchilla rabbits, where there are four genes that affect coat color. What are some typical disorders of the immune system? Allergies, autoimmune diseases, and immunodeficiency diseases are different kinds of disorders of the immune system. Allergies are abnormal sensitivities to a substance that is harmless to many other people. Common allergens include pollen, certain foods, cosmetics, medications, fungal spores, and insect venom. The antibody immunoglobulin E, IgE, is responsible for most allergic reactions. When exposed to an allergen, IgE antibodies attach themselves to mast cells or basophils. Mast cells are normal body cells that produce histamines and other chemicals. When exposed to the same allergen at a later time, the individual may experience an allergic response when the allergen binds to the antibodies attached to mast cells, causing the cells to release histamine and other inflammatory chemicals. While most allergic reactions are expressed as a runny nose, difficulty in breathing, skin rashes and eruptions, or intestinal discomfort, a severe allergic reaction results in anaphylactic shock. Autoimmune diseases are diseases in which the immune system rejects the body's own molecules. Insulin-dependent diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. Systemic lupus erythematosus, and rheumatic fever are autoimmune diseases. In contrast, in immunodeficiency diseases such as AIDS, the immune system is too weak to fight disease. Why is the shape of an enzyme so important? Shape is critical to the function of all molecules, but especially enzymes, which are three-dimensional. The active site of an enzyme is the area where substrate binds and the reaction takes place. How an enzyme reacts with its substrate is similar to how a ship docks. There are minor bonds that form between the enzyme and substrate until docking is complete. Anything affecting a protein's shape would have an effect on its ability to react with the substrate. Who discovered the Golgi apparatus? In 1898 Camillo Golgi, 1843 to 1926, an Italian physician first described an irregular network of small fibers, cavities, and granules in nerve cells. It was not until the 1940s and the invention of the electron microscope that the existence of the Golgi apparatus was confirmed. In 1906 Golgi and Santiago Ramón y Cayal, 1852-1934, were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for their investigations into the fine structure of the nervous system. What is a MVP?
the MVP, minimum viable population size, is the smallest number of individuals needed to perpetuate a population, subpopulation, or species. PVAs, population viability analyses, are especially helpful in predicting the MVP. What is the periderm? Periderm replaces the epidermis as the protective covering. In stems and roots of plants with secondary growth, the periderm consists of three structures, one, the cork or phelum. Two, the cork cambium or phelogen, and three, the phelloderm. The cork or phelum is non living and is the protective tissue formed to the outside by the cork cambium. The cork cambium or phelogen is the meristem that produces the periderm. The phelloderm is a living parenchyma tissue formed to the inside of the meristem. What are imperfect fungi? Imperfect fungi are also called deuteromycetes or conidial fungi. They are an assemblage of distinct fungal species that are known to reproduce only asexually. The sexual reproductive features have not been identified and are not used as the basis for classification. In this group, sexual reproduction has not been observed. Most imperfect fungi are thought to be Ascomycetes that have lost the ability to reproduce sexually. The best known members of the Deuteromycetes are the genera Penicillium and Aspergillus. Whenever a mycologist discovers a sexual stage in one of these fungi, the species is reclassified from the imperfect category to a particular phylum, the phylum selected depends on the type of sexual structures. What is a keystone species? A keystone species is a species that is crucial or essential to the ecosystem's community structure. Originally, a keystone species was always thought to be the top predator, such as the grey wolf. Scientists have found that wolf population sizes influence populations of both their prey and other species in the environment. However, a more recent viewpoint recognizes that less conspicuous species are also very important. As all species are interconnected in a biological community. Other examples of keystone species include the sea star, Pisister. Found along the coast of Washington state, and the black-tailed prairie dog of the prairie ecosystem. The sea star feeds on mussels and prevents the mussels from crowding out other species. The prairie dog is a critical source of food for larger predators. Its burrowing loosens the soil, and its burrows act as home for other creatures. What is translation? Translation is the process that produces polypeptides from an mRNA transcript. 
This process involves several different types of molecules. tRNA, rRNA, ribosomal proteins, and the energy molecule GTP. Are rickettsii and chlamydiae bacteria or viruses? For many years, rickettsii and chlamydiae were thought to be viruses because they are very small and are intracellular parasites. They are now known to be bacteria because they possess both DNA and RNA. Have cell walls similar to those found in gram-negative bacteria, divide by binary fission. And are susceptible to antibiotics that produce an effect in most bacteria. What is the difference between a gene and a chromosome? The human genome contains 24 distinct, physically separate units called chromosomes. Arranged linearly along the chromosomes are tens of thousands of genes. The term gene refers to a particular part of a DNA. Molecule defined by a specific sequence of nucleotides. It is the specific sequence of the nitrogen bases that encodes a gene. The human genome contains about 3 billion base pairs, and the length of genes varies widely. What is the composition of urine? Urine is composed mostly of water containing organic wastes as well as some salts. The composition of urine can vary according to diet, time of day, and diseases. In one measure, the makeup of urine is 95% water and 5% solids. In terms of organic wastes, per 1500 ml, Urine contains 30 g of urea, 1 to 2 g each of creatinine and ammonia, and 1 g of uric acid. In terms of salts or ions, 25 g per 1500 ml of urine contain the positive ion sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium, as well as the negative ions chlorides, sulfates, Phosphates. How does the immune system work? The immune system has two main components white blood cells and antibodies circulating in the blood. The antigen-antibody reaction forms the basis for this immunity. When an antigen, antibody generator, a harmful bacterium, virus, fungus, parasite, or other foreign substance invades the body, a specific antibody is generated to attack the antigen. The antibody is produced by B lymphocytes, B cells, in the spleen or lymph nodes. An antibody may either destroy the antigen directly or it may label it so that a white blood cell called a macrophage, or scavenger cell, can engulf the foreign intruder. After a human has been exposed to an antigen, a later exposure to the same antigen will produce a faster immune system reaction. 
the necessary antibodies will be produced more rapidly and in larger amounts. Artificial immunization uses this antigen antibody reaction to protect the human body from certain diseases. By exposing the body to a safe dose of antigen to produce effective antibodies as well as a readiness for any future attacks of the harmful antigen. What is biochemistry? As a field of scientific study, chemistry may be divided into various subgroups. One major subgroup is organic chemistry, which refers to the study of carbon-based compounds including carbohydrates and hydrocarbons such as methane and butane. Within the field of organic chemistry there is a discipline that focuses solely on the study of the organic molecules that are important to living organisms, this branch is known as biochemistry. Does exercise increase the number of muscle cells? Exercise does not increase the number of muscle cells. Adult animals have a fixed number of skeletal muscle cells. Exercise, however, does enlarge existing skeletal muscle cells. How much wood is needed to make one ton of paper? In the United States, wood pulp is usually used in paper manufacturing. Pulp is usually measured by cord or weight. Although the fiber used in making paper is derived overwhelmingly from wood, Many other ingredients are needed as well. One ton of paper typically requires two cords of wood, 55,000 gal, 208,000 L, of water. 102 pounds 46 kilograms of sulfur, 350 pounds 159 kilograms of lime, 289 pounds 131 kilograms of clay, 1.2 tons of coal 112 kilowatt hours of power 20 pounds 9g of dye and pigment and 108 pounds 49 kilograms of starch other ingredients may also be necessary What are rusts and smuts and what effect do they produce in crops? Rusts and smuts are very small fungi responsible for many serious plant diseases. Cereals and other grains are highly susceptible to attack by rusts and smuts. Many rusts and smuts have complicated life cycles as they are known. To use more than one plant species as a host during their lifetime. For example, wheat rust spends a portion of its life in barberry plants and a portion in wheat. How are plants identified based on their growth patterns?
herbaceous or non-woody plants die at the end of each growing season. Woody plants add a new layer of wood each year. What is tissue engineering? Tissue engineering is used to create semi-synthetic tissues that are used to replace or support the function of defective or injured body parts. It is a broad field, encompassing cell biology, biomaterial engineering, microscopic engineering, robotics, and bioreactors, where tissues are grown and nurtured. Tissue engineering can improve on current medical therapies. By designing replacements that mimic natural tissue function. Commercially produced skin is already in use for treating patients with burns and diabetic ulcers. What is the pH scale? The pH scale is the measurement of the H and concentration, hydrogen ions, in an aqueous solution. It is used to measure the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. A neutral solution has a pH of 7, a solution with a pH greater than 7 is basic or alkaline, and a solution with a pH less than 7 is acidic. The lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. As the pH scale is logarithmic, each whole number drop on the scale represents a tenfold increase in acidity. Meaning the concentration of H and increases tenfold. Are spiders really dangerous? Most spiders are harmless organisms that, rather than being dangerous to humans, are actually allies in the continuing battle to control insects. Most venom produced by spiders to kill prey is usually harmless to humans. However, there are two spiders in the United States that can produce severe or even fatal bites. They are the black widow spider, Latrodectus mactans, and the brown recluse spider, Loxocells reclusa. Black widows are shiny black with a bright red hourglass on the underside of the abdomen. The venom of the black widow is neurotoxic and affects the nervous system. About four or five of each 1,000 black widow bites have been reported as fatal. Brown recluse spiders have a violin-shaped strip on their back. The venom of the brown recluse is hemolytic and causes the death of tissues and skin surrounding the bite. Their bite can be mild to serious and sometimes fatal. <laughs>